Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Worship you, Jesus. Bless you, Holy Man. Your name is great and mighty to be praised. You are alone are worthy, Jesus. Jesus Christ is Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Some believers still argue about giving. And since I'm being part of the church, I heard this argument about giving, about tie, you tie your, your offering, how you give, when to give, and the argument continue until now. But we all have to go to the Word of God. Um, and today we're going to see in the Word of God, New Testament giving. Amen? We say we are New Testament people. We are. Amen. Let's, let's see how New Testament giving is. Um, the most important thing that you hear from God. Okay? And when you hear from God, you obey. Okay? That's, that's the best thing. Okay? Because God speaks. Um, you know, when it's about giving, God says, give this and give it to this. You have to, because of obedience. God's about obedience. Amen. Amen. But we know that some things are established already. But let him, but God continue speaking to his people. And the people of God to be obedient. Amen. Okay. And everything. Yes. And everything. Even with giving. Okay. And let's go to Second Corinthians chapter eight. Chapter eight. We're gonna start in verse one. Amen. And the word of God said, Amen. And there said, Moreover, brethren, we may known to you the grace of God this talk on the churches of Macedonia. Grace, you know. Paul always spoke about grace. We know that grace is the unmerited favor of God toward us, but it's his powers too. Yeah. Okay. Grace is power. And everything in the kingdom of God is grace. It's about grace. Jesus Christ brought grace. Amen. He brought the grace to us. Okay. We, we see here the Paul is saying that the Lord is true, that means he gave grace to the Macedonian church, okay? Listen, that in a great triumph of affliction, the abundance of the joy and the deep poverty is that abundance and the riches of the liberality. Liberality. Then we see that, right? that these people, they were in trial, okay? Great trial and affliction, okay? Great trial and affliction, but they had abundance of joy and the trial and affliction, but they were in deep poverty too, amen? Trial, we have trial, affliction, Okay? But they have wounds of joy. Okay? And trial, affliction, they were in deep poverty. But the grace of God was upon them. Amen. I think that's what the joy was, because the, the, the grace of God was upon them. Yes. And they were people of faith, they received the grace of God, even in all those bad circumstances. Yes. Okay. You hear church, Amen. you can have joy, you can have abundance of joy in the middle, in the midst of your trial, okay, in trial, affliction, deep poverty, you can have joy, Amen. okay, and the grace of God, the most important thing here, the grace of God was upon them, Come on. the grace of God. You see, the favor of God, 
the power of God was, and then in the middle of all the bad things that were happening in their life. Okay? Amen? For those they said they cannot have joy in the middle of the trials. For those they think because something is going wrong in their life, that means they can't act with them. Okay? It's abundant in the rich of the liberality. Why, you know? And some might say, you know, Paul, you contradicting, you said, you said deep poverty and then abundant in the rich of the liberality. <laughs> it's not, it, it, that's not a contradiction. Okay. You want to see why? Verse 3 says, For I bear witness that according to their, to their ability, yes, and that according to the ability, yes, and beyond their ability, you see, beyond their ability, they were freely willing, freely willing, freely willing, imploring us with much urgency that we will receive the gift and the fellowship of the ministering to the saints. Gift, we're talking about giving system uh, that's monetary thing give okay or material give they the macedonian church the all the travel they, they were they say okay receive this from us we want to be a blessing to the church see when nobody was uh cunning them okay nobody was manipulating them they were willing, their own will. They want to participate. Okay? Amen? Amen. Verse 5. And not only as we have hold, but they first gave themselves to the Lord. You see, the commitments of those people were first to the Lord. Were committed to the kingdom. Come on. See? If you committed to the kingdom, you committed to the Lord first, you don't have problem with giving. That's right. See? Nobody needs to manipulate you. Nobody needs to promise you something to give because you are committed to the Lord. If you committed to the Lord, you committed to the kingdom. Amen. Okay? That you don't need extra push to give. Eh? Come on. Okay. They were first committed themselves to the Lord. Amen? Amen. They gave themselves to the Lord. Then them to us by the will of God. Then to a friend was the Lord for them. And then to the brother. That's what they was committed to the brother. To give to the brothers. Because they were first to the Lord. Okay. See, you don't have a problem with people in the church to give if they are committed to the Lord. If they gave themselves to the Lord first. Amen. They know they 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 supposed to have the, the for the word of the kingdom. Yes. Because they are, they are committed to the Lord. And and why this is some point here about the Macedonian? Because the Macedonian church, or it is called the Macedonian church. There was, as he said here, deep poverty, trial, and affliction. And from that, they gave. They gave from their own will. From their own will, they say, we're going to participate of this grace, of this blessing. See, we want to participate of this ministry. Nobody was manipulated. Okay. And nobody need to manipulate no one. Come on. He said, by the will of God, which by the will of God, why is the will of God? Because the will of, what is the will of God? That we participate in the thing of the kingdom, not only with activities, but with our substance. That we were finances. 
listen, not, we manipul not because of money manipulates you, not because somebody promised something to you, not because you know it's the will of God. That's right. If we do this, all the argument about when we give, we are to give tithes or offerings, we finish. You know the will of God to you, to you give you, to your congregation. And sometimes God speak to you in a clear way. Gives this to this ministry, to this ministry. And you have to obey because you have given yourself to the Lord. See? It because you belong to the Lord, you obey Him. Mm -hmm. And you don't think, why, Lord? Why this? Why that? And no question about it. And in that way, you are saved God from the cunning ones. <laughs> they, they cannot come to you and manipulate you to give something that you're not supposed to give. Because you are so close to the Lord, you have gave yourself to the Lord. You see? You have gave yourself to the Lord, that you belong to Him. And you did it because it's will, not because manipulation. Come on. Verse 6. So we all your titles that has that as he had begun, so he will also complete this grace in you as well. But the grace that Paul is talking about, the giving. But as you are bound in everything, in faith, in speech, in knowledge, in all diligence, and you love for us, see that you are bound in this grace also. I'm talking, this grace is the giving. Okay. You are bound. You receive the grace of God. Okay. You know, one of the things, the grace of God multiplies in a person when we walk in obedience. When you walk in obedience, the grace of God multiplies on you, abounds more and more and more in you. Okay. And we see here, the grace of God was in the church of Macedonia. Okay. Why? Because they were obedience. They when not looking their circumstances, right? Yeah. They were walking by faith. If they want, if they want to be obedient, they want to participate in the things of the kingdom. Okay. That's what the the motto to give, no no another motto. Come on. No hiding agenda. Okay. No hiding agenda. No. It was, it was pure love for the Lord and the church. Amen. Let's continue reading. 2 Corinthians chapter 9. Let's start again in verse 1. You can read the whole chapter today because continue talking about giving. Now concerning the ministering to the saints, it is superfluous for me to write to you, for I know your willingness, you see, your willingness, about which I boast of you to the Macedonians, that Achaia was ready a year ago, and you see you as there are to the majority, majority, yet I have Send them, brethren, lest all boasting of you to be in vain in this respect. He took it, this talking, all this about giving, okay? That I say you may be ready, lest if some Macedonians come with me and find you unprepared. 
we not to mention you should be a champ of this conference busting. Okay, why is talking to the Corinthians about this? Because we know already about Macedonia. They gave from the, the poverty, trial, affliction, they gave. Okay, he's talking, he's talking to the Corinthians, the Macedonians want to come. You have time to prepare you, you offer, let's call it offering. Have to be ready because the Macedonian kind of said, You remember the church of Corinthians? They were more money because Corinthians that was a place of, of business. Okay, people from everywhere is to come there for business. Okay, then so most of the people they have money. Okay, so the comparison was if this the church of Macedonia, the one deep poverty. Trial, affliction, maybe the persecution there and everything, and plus they, maybe they lost the, the, the property and, and job, but they gave some. Okay? So the Corinthians they were good in finances. They said, okay. Hey, the Macedonian church they gave, the deported. You, you are well. Yes. You have ready, you, you offer it. Because the brother, the brother and they come. Very far again, he said, Lest if some Macedonian come with me and find you unprepared. <laughs> no, no, no offering. <laughs> we not to mention you, you should be ashamed of this conscience boasting. Therefore, I thought it's necessary to exhort the brethren to go to you ahead of time and prepare your generous gift beforehand. Will you have previous promise? You see, they promised. They said, they, I send the blood to receive because you promised. But they would not get there and nothing, and they don't have prepared nothing after you promised. You see, they promised. No, nobody was cutting them. Nobody was manipulating them. Then they promise that it may be ready as a mouth, as a matter of generosity, and not as a grudging obligation. You see, come on, grudging obligation. We see the word of God. What is the word of God? The God loves the cheerful giver. Okay. Then, that's why God don't put burden in no one, because he loves the cheerful giving, giver. And this Corinthian church said, hey, we're going to prepare offering. We're going to prepare offerings for you guys. So they send the people, they send Titus and all that, brother, to receive it, right? He said, okay, let's see it's true. You offer, you promise. We expect to be ready. <laughs> and, uh, he said, you have previously promised. That he said, that you might be ready as a matter of, of generosity and not as a grudging obligation. You see? And not obligation be you promise. God love the cheerful giver. If somebody has to carry you, you're not cheerful. for giving you give because somebody has manipulated you or promised you something. We don't give our obligations. No fear, because some put fear in people to give. None of that. None of that necessary in okay. the church. You have to get away from the church. Manipulations, control, lies to be able to give. I'm not part of, have to, I'm not part of the kingdom. Amen. Okay, not all that. No, that's not the king. You see, manipulation that is not the king. But this I say. 
If you sow sparingly, will also reap sparingly. If you sow bountifully, we also reap bountifully. So let each one give as he purpose in his heart. You and your heart, you say, this is what I'm going to give. No, like we hear, they say, Ah, the Lord showed me that somebody had to give $2,000. The Lord not say nothing to them, just this manipulation. You purpose on your heart, that's what I'm going to give because I love the Lord, I love the kingdom. I want to be the, the kingdom to be so for the, the kingdom has to be so for his people. Yes. Okay, that means the church, the ministers. Okay, for willingness, from generosity, from the heart. And because you know it's the will of God Amen. to give. Verse 7 again. So let each one give as he purposes in his heart. Okay? Not grudgingly of of necessity, like a people, they tell people, give something, the guy will give you this. No, 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 necessity. Like a you, I give that and I spread this. No, that's not the way we give in the church. Mm -hmm. But that's what the way we've been seeing it, right? Because the manipulation, control, they say give something and give, give it 100% to what you give. It's, it's not that way. See, this, this, this New Testament giving, okay? Amen. So each one gives us a purpose in his heart. If you got generous heart, you give generous. If you're not, but you don't give generous. But uh, what you purpose in your heart, that's your heart, you see? It goes directly to your heart. Amen. The generous heart is generous. Right? So let each one give as his purpose in his heart, not gradually or of necessity. Not like a plain ladder. <laughs> I can think that the Lord give me this. That's your necessity. Is it? For God loves cheerful giver. Amen. Right? God loves the cheerful giver. God, you not say amen. God. Come on. We're dealing with God. Yeah, it's the will of God that we give. Okay? Please. If God loves the God loves the cheerful giver. He don't want you to be like, ah, oh, why I give? Why? Why I have to give? See? Because you're not cheerful, you you have those thoughts in your mind, like why I give, why I have to give, or when the guy speak to people, and they say, why me? Why have to give it to them? <laughs> you not give it to them, you give it to God. Because the one speaking to you. Amen. But they, but, but you know, those they don't have uh, generous heart, generous heart. You know what they do? They only give to the manipulator. You see, all those men that the church give money, most of them they are kind people. They are they are wolf. And they're not even feeling the sheep. They're not good shepherd. But they were the receiving the money. They're not building the kingdom. The kingdom of God, they're building their own kingdom because the Lord told me they're building their own kingdom. They're not edifying the body of Christ. They're edifying their pocket. Verse 8. 
and God is able to make all grace abound to you. The same way that God did for the Macedonian church, right? The grace of God was abound and in and, and, and the church of Macedonia. Okay? So it's Paul is saying, and God's able to make all grace abound toward you. Remember, God bestowed his grace upon the church of Macedonia. He said, the church, God will do the same thing with you. You're a cheerful giver. God will, will bestow and, and you his grace too. And abound. God make it happen. That his grace will abound in you. Well, you would, with myself, why I need the grace of God? You need the grace of God for everything. You need His grace. Amen. Even in giving, the, you give up, if you're a cheerful giver, you just give because you know that that ministry is doing the will of God. That church that you participate, they, they feed in you with the, the this of God. Then you give because that you, 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 you joyfully, I, I want to give because. You know, this is what I receive, everything from God. Yeah, there was the one that teaching me, guiding me, leading me. This ministry is doing the will of God. I'm going to give. You got to see that you are, that you are as a, 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 a generous, and you do it because the things of God, God will make is great to abound on you. God. Don't believe the promise of the man. Come on. Because they cannot accomplish, or they cannot, they cannot fulfill what they promised. They know the lie. They know that. You don't know, but they know. They cannot fulfill what they promise. But what God, but Paul said that God will, will, uh, will make grace to abound in you, that will happen. God will do it because you are a, 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 a generous heart. You do unto his kingdom. You blessing his ministry. He is in his ministry. And God said, I will make my grace to abound. How that grace could, have, could appear in your life, I don't know. But what, God knows what you need. <laughs> God knows when you need His grace to do what you need to do. God knows and they give you grace to you. Okay? Remember, it's grace. We all need the grace of God for everything. I need the grace of God to continue serving Him. You need His grace of God to continue doing your job, you doing it. That you do God, you, you also die hard, God give it that grace. It's God's giving it. I cannot give it to you, but it's God will give it to you. Okay? See, and God is able to make your grace abound to you. He said that you always have it all sufficient, all things. May abundant for every good work, good work, okay, abundance. Then you got one, you continue giving, God give it power to give, to make money to give, but they give it, I mean, the power to do what you need to do. God, no man. Then, then we see that God is not pleased we minister there, manipulate all the, his people to Amen. get, to make people to give. Yeah. That's not the way. It's not New Testament giving. That's contrary to the will of God. Manipulation, control, that's contrary to the will of God. Okay? Man, uh, New Testament giving the way Paul said, from your heart, how you purpose in your heart. Okay? If you are generous of heart, you said, this is the kingdom, I give it, you be, and you be here from God too, because sometimes God will tell you and tell you okay, how much to give, where to give. And you have to be obedient. Mm -hmm. okay? Remember, we're talking about God and you, not talking men manipulating you. Come on. Verse 9 says, as is written, he has despaired abroad, he has given to the poor, his right to endure forever. 
Say, now may you supply seed to the sower and bread for food, supply and multiply the seed you have sown and increase the fruit of your rising. Who does that, that God? Nobody else. Amen. Okay? Men use this creature to manipulate you, but they cannot do nothing for you. Only God. That's when you give, remember, this giving, you do it because you love the Lord, you love the kingdom, you love his work. Amen. And you're part of the kingdom, that's why you're doing it. No for manipulation. No gratitude. No for necessity. See, God loves the cheerful giving. You know, that's a giver. You know, that's a giver, the cheerful giver. Where she is, well, you are enriched in everything for all liberality, which calls thanksgiving through us to God for the administration of this serving, not only supplies the need for the saints, but also is abounding to many thanksgivings to the giving. May the, the one receiving the giving thank God. And, and, and thank God for you and thank to God for, for a lot, for, for use you. Amen. Verses 13 says, why you to the proof of this ministry, they glorify God for the obedience, you see? They glorify God for the obedience of all your confession, confession to the gospel of Christ and for your liberal sharing with them and all, and all men. Okay, let me see. When you give it your ministry, not only the who want the ministry, the one preaching, not only the one that they are preaching that the minister, the giving is ministering because the minister cannot do it, you're not giving. That you do a non thing that they, they, you giving is like, I don't do it now, did you have something? Because not all of us are preachers. <laughs> no. No, working in the, you know, full time ministry. So you giving is allow that minister to continue doing it. And God will bless you because that you do your part. Amen. Okay? And who and, and who has been glorified? God. See, all the glories to God. You cannot glorify you say, because I'm giving my money. <laughs> you cannot have that too. Or say, I'm not giving to see if they can do something. You cannot know the other two. Because then you're not doing it for God, you're doing it for yourself. And that do not bring glory to God. I hear people saying that, I don't give it, I'm not gonna give that money. Oh, you can, I don't do this, and they want to try to manipulate in the church, they come to the church to have control the, the, the pastor, the minister, with the money. They want the pastor to do whatever they want, because they give it. That happened to happen from there. The minister tried to manipulate and then tried to manipulate the minister to with the money. The people, because they, they give, try to manipulate the church, the pastor, the minister. That's wrong. It's wrong that the, the, the pastor, the minister manipulate people for money. It's wrong of the people that try to manipulate the pastor or the minister with the money. Or we hold or beholding the money. We cast and give. That's obedient to God. You see? They, they try to, some people try it. Behold, behold. God, God said, give it to your head. I said that because I heard it. For many I will not give it. God, the Lord told me, they said, oh, how did the Lord told me? The Lord told me to give this, but I'm not going to give it because this and that. And they got all the excuses. They're disobedient to God. They have nothing to do with it. Between them and God, they've been disobedient to God. 
that they're stealing the glory of God. God tried to do something in the lion, the lion of that, or whatever couldn't receive the, the blessings. But they getting in the middle, they, they, they just selfish <laughs> and disobedience. Because you're telling me, God told you to give certain amount of money, and you don't give who you had it. You only yourself because you disobey God. Maybe you delay the blessing of the ministry or something because God purpose for everything. But you're the one hurting yourself and your relationship with God. You see? Very for this. And by the prayer for you who long for you because of the exceeding grace of God in you, send it to God for his indescribable gift. Okay? You see, God, remember, every time you obey God, His grace abounds in you more and more. And that to the, we always act obedience. You have, have to be in giving or whatever God tells you to do, and you do it. His grace abounds in you. That was obedience is important, okay? Obedience to the will of God is important. Amen. Because the obedience to obey God and make us strong and grace and bring us to closest to Him, closer in our relationship with Him. Don't take it for granted your relationship with God. Let's go to Galatians chapter C. Galatians chapter C. Galatians chapter 6, verse 6. Let him talk the word, share in all good things with him who teaches. Okay? Now, you heard that? <laughs> Somebody is teaching you the word, the pastor, you, the minister, whatever minister you. It's an obligation on you, on your part, to give to that minister. You see? Because he is. He giving you some spiritual things. The word of God teaching you, guiding you. It's, it's your obligation it's to share all good things with him who teaches, you see. And written. It's there in the word of God. It's there. Matthew chapter 10, it says it is written. You see? Hallelujah. There was when Jesus sent his disciple to preach the twelve apostles. Amen. Look at what please let's start you Matthew chapter 10. Amen. Let's start in verse 6. Then as you go preach, saying the kingdom of heaven is a hand. Okay? Heal the sick, clean the lepers, raise the dead, cast out demons. Freely you have received, freely give. Okay. Let's start right there. Look at the Command that Jesus gave the apostle, go preach, do this and do that, and then you're not going to charge for that. <laughs> they, and we heard this group people say that somebody was charged for prophecy, somebody was charged for, for prayer, and, and for many things they charge in the church, right? But when Jesus said, don't charge, freely you receive it, freely give it. Okay? That's, when we're talking about giving in the church, the minister not supposed to charge you for any, for anything to you Come to on. give for your generosity. That's clear. That's clear from your generosity, from your hearts, because you love God, you love the kingdom of God, you're receiving, you're receiving, and that's your appreciation. And not charging you. It's not charging, nobody charging you. 
But if somebody charging you, it's out of the will of God. Come on. Because what Jesus said, and this command was for the toilet totally for every minister. Freely give it, freely what's given to you. Free you give. You receive it freely. All the gifts that we receive, the, even the call is free. You, you have to give it free. You cannot put an, 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 an amount. Or what you have to give it this because I teach you. Oh, I want to pray for you. You have to pay this. I got a prophecy for you. You <laughs> pay me for pay me so and so amount of money. That's wrong. Okay. Then we just continue reading the here in Matthew 10, verse 9. Very nice. Provide neither gold nor silver nor copper in your money belts. So why Jesus was taking the mind he said, I had to accumulate things. From his ministry. The ministry of Christ is supposed to be the mindset be about, about what can I get. Okay? And this is the, the mentality that many ministers have now. That's what they manipulate people. Verse this No ban for your journey, no tutu, no sandal, no staff. For a worker, look at for a worker is worthy of his food. Okay? Yes, the minister needs to eat. <laughs> right? Because that's his job. But from God, not like in that what is Jesus saying? Jesus is just saying, hey, it's alright to give it to the to them. Because they do my will. It's alright. That's why he said, it's all right. It's not wrong to give it to the minister or to the church. It's not wrong. It's all right. Because they're doing the work of God. The work of ministry. But they don't need, they don't need to manipulate no one. Or to charge. It's just wrong. Let's go to First Timothy. I think it's clear, right? Amen. I have to many things in the church about giving in. And all what was clear. Wrong intention, manipulation, fear tactic, lies. And they spend so much more time exhorting people about giving them the real message than they have for that day. 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 17. Amen? Let the elders who rule well be counted worthy of double honor, especially those who labor in the world and doctrine. Talking about the pastor, the teachers, the ministers, the one who preached the gospel, the one who who edify in the chair with the preaching and teaching, okay? He said, verse 18, you see, remember, we're going to repeat the word that Jesus said before. For the scripture said, for the scripture said, you shall not muscle and oss while your is cleft of the grain. You see, and the laborers, laborers, and the labor is worthy of his ways. Amen? Who said that? Jesus, right? Jesus said it. This, it's all right, I gave it. It's all right to give to the ministry and to the church. It's all right. Okay? It's all right. What is not all right is to manipulate, to lie. To be to use different tactics to get people money and to promise things they cannot fulfill. They are supposed to promise anything to them to get the money. Okay, you're not supposed to sell prayers. <laughs> you're not supposed to sell prophecies. You're not supposed to sell healings. You're not supposed to sell deliverance.
remember when Jesus, when Jesus one, one, one day talking with the Lord, he, he talked to me. I wasn't, you know, looking for, for I didn't have this question he, had, he said to me. When he healed the son of the, of the noble man, I mean, that mean the man had money. And the Lord asked me, you think, what do you think happened as the son got healed? He was so grateful that he gave money to Jesus. He said, good to the minister of Jesus. He gave it. Jesus didn't charge him. He was grateful. And you think somebody, his son, the nobody can heal. He got some of daughter sick. Someone has the son of daughter sick. And they take it to all the daughters all the morning. And nobody can heal. And then they bring it to the church or to a minister or to a Christian. And, they, and that person pray for it and that, and that child gave him. What do you think that rich man going to do? You think he's going to say thank you and leave? He thinks he's going to be with a check. <laughs> Not because you charge him, but because he's been grateful. He said, he see the glory of God. He said, God, you know, the least I can do is give it to the church. The least I of this ministry, the least I can do. The the church don't need, or the minister don't need to manipulate people and to give them. And the fight in the church to be, oh, we need to tie or not tie. No, what you heard is saying. You know the scriptures. And we read the scriptures. You know the truth. You know you part of the kingdom of that and you do it to give. That's it. Amen. The, the question is, you got you had a generous, generous or not? And, and, and remember, they don't ask for people things that they don't have. God knows what you have and what you need. They don't make God tell you, oh, give something that you don't have. Or put a mouse there, throw a mouse there, say, God say, you know, if God wants you to give some amount, he will, uh, a specific amount, he will tell you. He will tell you. But if you don't hear from God, you know you're supposed to give. <laughs> if you don't hear from God, you know you're supposed to give. Because the church is the one that's supposed to support the church. But the work of the ministry of the kingdom has continued expanding. There's a right to give the minister, the minister, a right to give. This I said, this I said in Matthew, we read it, that the, that the host, the most, the host, when he's doing his job, let it eat. <laughs> That's what he said, let it eat. Okay. Yes. I, I pray that with this truth, the truth of the word of God, all this question that you have about giving have been answered. Okay. All the questions you have. See, as I said, the labor is worthy of his wages. Okay, it's worth it. He said, you receive in the spiritual thing, it's okay, you give it your material things to the minister. It's written. We're not showing anything that is not written or it's not the will of God for you. Okay, the, the extra that you see in the church is liar, manipulating, Lying to you and asking for you things and promise you did this, that's wrong. Those things are wrong and you need to know those. You need to know those things. They are wrong if they promise you something to you, no, prompting you to give without promise. Or they sell you healing or deliverance. 
o prayers o prophets that's all wrong okay let's 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 finish with look 10 verse 7 Jesus, when Jesus said to his disciples, this way, you know, remember, he sent the 12, and then he said, he sent the 17, okay? And look, he said the same thing to them. The same thing he told the, the 12, he told the 17, okay? Look, at, let's read verse 7. You can read the whole chapter, but let's read verse 7. And remain the same house, Eating and drinking such a thing as they give. You see how they give. You're not telling what to give to you. They give. Amen? For the labor, the labor is worth it of his wages. Do not go from house to house. I mean, do not go begging and asking. Just receive what they give to you. Why? Because you're worth it. To receive because the work you do. That's what Jesus said. And again, again, as, and we read it. No, don't give by fear, don't give by manipulation, don't give for necessity, no, don't give gradually. It's the will of God you give, yes, because we are body. And everybody had to participate in the thing of the kingdom. The preacher preached, the teacher teach. Right? And the people give. But without manipulation, control, and lies, and all this thing that I said. But this, what we saw today, that's New Testament given. And we're supposed to follow this. Amen? And we're supposed to follow this. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ is Lord.